Okay. Um, uh, oh. All right, then I'm going to call the meeting to order here. Um, this is a special meeting uh, to talk about the uh, uh, George Street or County Road 48 uh, project. So, um, with that, uh, I'll remind Council to declare a significant interest if it arises. We can declare it now or anything pops up later. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll go right into the business here, and that's with Google Engineering. And uh, I'm not sure how you want to do this. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Peter. Yeah. I'll want to kick it off. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through the chair, good afternoon, uh, Council. We're very happy to be here today to present uh, preliminary information on the County Road 48 reconstruction project, uh, the Village of Pavlock Master Drainage Study. Uh, you have in front of you here the uh, uh, Technical Advisory Committee who's working on this project. Uh, so we have the uh, AO Bob Angioni and uh, Peter Lawson, the Manager of Public Works. Uh, Shannon Sargentson is uh, with Jewel Engineering. In the back, we have uh, Brian Weir. He's the Director of Planning and Public Works with the County. And Kyle Darling is uh, one of our Engineering Supervisors with the County. And my name is Peter Nielsen, Manager of Capital Projects. Uh, just to introduce you to the project, and we're here to receive uh, feedback. Uh, any information is good information to uh, give to our uh, technical advisory committee as we uh, prepare this project. So to give you the background on the study process, we're following the municipal class EA environmental assessment process. Uh, municipalities are mandated to uh, follow this process for all of our municipal infrastructure. Uh, so the, this project is following two schedules under the EA process. So the, the County Road 48 project itself, itself is a, a schedule A plus. Uh, so the road is being built for the same use and capacity. Uh, so we're able to uh, follow a lower class of process. The uh, master drainage study itself is following the uh, EA Master Drainage Study Process, so which is uh, prescribed in the Class EA documents. Uh, two, two processes following side by side. Uh, so we're we're very early in the, in the process in the study stage, but uh, we're basically in phase two in the, in the fact finding. Phase five is construction. <laughs> that's that's our, our target is to, to get to phase five uh, with the intent to introduce a construction project in 2024. Okay. That one, that one sheet that you had up there, I don't know about everybody else, it was tough to read that thing, even on the computer. <laughs> um, anyway, so I couldn't really tell where we were at. Thank you. Uh, so the purpose of the Public Information Center today is, uh, again, uh, two parts of the project. Uh, so we're, we're going to present the preliminary design, uh, which is not final by any means, of the County Road uh, 48 project. So we want to receive uh, feedback from Council and from the public to present this information. Uh, so the intent is to reconstruct the road platform and the surface water drainage system, the storm sewer system. Uh, that is the county's jurisdiction. That's why we're a funding partner, a project partner in the township on this project. And uh, the municipality uh, looks after the sanitary sewer system, uh, the drinking water system, uh, sidewalks, and uh, street lighting, and the fire protection system as well. And again, we hope to advance this project, phase one of the project in 2024, and okay. develop a plan for phases. Is two and three, uh, so that uh, that uh, that study will analyze the drainage areas, uh, catchment basin within the village, and uh, or, um, look for shortfalls in the system as well. Um, develop uh, drainage solutions uh, to address those deficiencies. Uh, look at uh, potential flooding and how we could mitigate that uh, that flooding. And, uh, this is going to develop into a long-term plan for the uh, for the uh, drainage system within the bill. 
So ideally we'll develop a phase construction plan for the trunk sewer system. And uh, once we get uh, have the opportunity to gather around the, the long road drawing here, we can discuss the, uh, the location of that sewer system and uh, look for funding mechanisms uh, for the, uh, the future uh, drainage system to serve the municipality. Uh, so our preliminary design concepts, we're looking at a phased process for the County Road 48 reconstruction project. So phase 1A, uh, Quebec Street from George Street to Highway 7, and phase 1B of uh, George Street, County Road 48, from Quebec Street to Matheson. Now we're proposing this uh, phased solution for, for uh, phase 1. Uh, basically to support traffic movement. Uh, we, when you're reconstructing uh, underground sewer systems and water main systems, it's a deep excavation. Uh, there will not be much other choice other than to close the road to do that, uh, that work. Uh, so we're, we're going to be, uh, hopefully be, here, be hearing from the public tonight about where they like to park their vehicles for both uh, residential and commercial businesses. So, That'll be that'll be a challenge for us to uh, to develop a solution. For. Uh, it may require some temporary rear yard park, well, parking lot, for example, or uh, sharing parking lots between neighbors. Or, so that that will have to evolve. Phases two and three, uh, we do not have the timing uh, for those projects at this time, uh, primarily because of funding at this time. Uh, we understand that. Uh, the township has sufficient funding to proceed with phase one. And, uh, the county, uh, we've been carrying funding in our construction program for a number of years to address our responsibilities with the uh, road, road network and the, uh, the drainage systems. At this time, I'll turn it over to Shannon. Uh, Shannon will walk you through some of the details of the construction. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Dan Ferguson. I'm old Jewel now for 20 years. We're going to walk you through the uh, kind of the nuts and bolts of the project. Um, yeah, phase 1A, which is Quebec Street, uh, it's going to be three and a quarter meter wide travel lane widths with two and a half meter wide parking located on the east side, obviously. Um, one and a half meter wide concrete sidewalk. Um, new curb gutter, um, as well as water main, sanitary sewer, and uh, storm sewer manholes, the whole bit, um, which is scheduled for next next summer, hopefully. It's a plan. Um, so that's the general cross section of the project. Um, Showing sidewalks, curb and gutter, and uh, just the road platform itself. Um, uh, any questions? Okay. So, yeah, we got. So, you have a total uh, road closure for this section too. What was going on? Uh, likely, with the amount of infrastructure being replaced, generally, yeah, there's little to no room for safe traffic in in these kind of cases, so especially with the buildings being so close to the. So this is the shortest part of your whole project. So how long would you expect this phase? How long would you expect it to be closed to the public? That there, you're probably talking two to three, I'd say three weeks likely for that little piece. Okay. You know, a worst case the, scenario. Okay. I'll have the same question when you get on to the next section. Yeah. Okay. You, you'll ask, you'll get access tonight, trust me. Okay. okay. Hey Mark. Yeah, no, I think I figured it out by looking at the other diagram, but there is a there is a sidewalk on both sides, right? From uh talking about the part between Highway 7 and Ontario yeah. Street. Yeah, and we have sidewalk on both sides that located on both sides. Just for reference, what are the, the different line colors? Like what are they represent? Um so this here is your sanitary sewer, which runs down the center of the road. Okay. Um the the green is your storm sewer, is blue is the water main. Okay. Oh, same thing. Okay. 
Phase 1B, which is George Street from Quebec easterly to Matheson, um, three meter wide travel portion of the road or lane, uh, two and a half, 2.4 meter parking on uh, both sides, one and a half meter concrete sidewalk on the both sides, um, full new concrete curb and gutter, uh, water sewer, storm sewer, as well, full reconstruction. And again, that's the cross section, the proposed cross section um, for that stretch. Same question, how long? <laughs> um, a stretch like that, you're, well, I mean, they would close it on a block by block. Like they wouldn't go into the next block until they had the, the block previous um, pretty well done, maybe just in gravel. So you're probably you're probably two to three weeks per block, you know, just ballpark based on you know past experience. Okay, because now you're getting into your businesses. Uh, yeah. So generally, in a case like that where we're in a downtown portion, we would have a contractor have staff on site to walk people through the site uh, to help with. You know anybody who's you know wheelchairs, um, any case like that. For the most part, we generally have them have dedicated staff to help with pedestrians to to get to the businesses. Okay. Typically, okay. so phase two, which is to be determined as far as timeline, um, is from Matheson to Mary Street. Um, three meter traveled lane widths, uh, 2.4 meter wide parking again. Um, one and a half meter sidewalk. Matheson to, to Mary Street. Mm hmm I think today. It's, it's a rink. He's talking, I know he's saying Matheson, but I think it's still the entrance to the rink by the looks of it. Yeah, Matt, yeah, sorry, yeah exactly. To the park and the yeah. community center, right? There's no street there. Okay. Yeah, I think I think on Google, I think it shows Matheson perhaps that's but anyway. Crosswalk? Yes, basically okay. where the crosswalk is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, you refer to it as crosswalk and okay. then everybody will know what you're talking yep. about. So crosswalk. Tonight, crosswalk. No? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um again, full reconstruction, uh new curb and gutter, water sewer, storm sewer. Um with the that's the platform profile or the cross section as well. Um any other questions? Just on the timelines for this construction, so I know it all it's going to rely on funding and things like that. Yeah. But is it like for us? We need to plan. We know it's going to be expensive anyway. So um, to keep this thing moving, like I hate to see it stop because once it stops, we might might not get you back again type of thing. So uh, um, so moving forward, once we get phase one going. Um, hopefully we can come up with a plan for phase two and three, like, and not just to be determined, like have a timeline with that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm hoping. Um, but once you're done all this presentation and everything, all this planning is all done. It's just a matter of getting the money together to finish it in the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We uh, we're pushing through and designing the, the entire yeah. section. Perfect. All in one big block and then it'll be constructed as permitted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do I understand right? Uh, let's deal with the blue line. Um, when you do start that, you'll go one block at a time. Yeah, generally they go one block at a time for every contractor does it differently. Sometimes they'll take all three pipe at the same time, water, sewer, storm. Some cases they'll do one at a time, but for the most part, you try to keep it confined to one block at a time. Just for uh Convenience to the homeowners, uh, the public. You try to clean up one section before you move on to the next. Typically, well, these these time frames on the, that particular section of George Street, pretty sensitive. We have a funeral home, 
We have a seniors' home. Mm -hmm. We have businesses on both sides. So timing is is rather critical. And we've got parking that we have to, as you mentioned earlier, have to figure out. So I'm just curious. So it's they would be finishing up the first section, but they'd be moving on to the second one. Yeah. They'd be moving ahead, but it's still drivable. Yeah, typically they would have it drivable. They would have it. It's not always asphalt, mind you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they would have it cleaned up to the point where they're ready to pave, ready to do curbs and everything else. Okay. Here we go. All this part of uh, phase two is just the Mary Street portion at the very uh, east end of the project. Um, they're, ha they're actually wider travel lanes, five and a half meters, uh, one and a half meter sidewalk on the west side. Um, concrete curbing, gutter, water sewer, kept uh, basins, uh, manual, and so forth. Or reconstruction. Well, right through Highway 7. I could highlight uh, the intersection of Highway 7 and Mary Street. That's subject to a separate design exercise uh, that would be conducted by the NTO. And it's our understanding that uh, the NTO will be coming with, with council in, in the summer period. Uh, so you'll hear more about that. Yeah, we met with them a few times last term and trying to get that intersection because of the, the offset. Um, and there was talk at the time about taking, we had talked to them about taking some uh, property from the Jamboree there to straighten it out. And we thought that was happening, but it just seemed that we had a lot of things, a lot of things were happening. And it's not. So anyways, yeah, we'll have to deal with them for that. So third and final phase, would be Ontario Street from concession to Quebec. Um, four meter travel lanes, 2.4 meter parking on the north side. Um, one, half, one and a half meter sidewalk on the north side as well. And uh, again, full reconstruction with curb and gutter, uh, water, sewer, and storm sewer as well. Reason that was left for the end the way it's laid out here is the um, it was probably one it looks better on the surface but there is lots of yeah. issues with it but we thought that would be the best yeah absolutely until the built, end uh, in ninety seven I believe so a lot of the I think the, the main purpose for that is that the, the water main and the, and the sanitary main are old but the storm and the, the curb and gutter and everything's in good shape so full reconstruction for that so other than other than storm sewer, we possibly could leave that. And that might be, wouldn't be able to leave that in place because it's fairly new. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was just going to, because I think we've talked about it. I've had chats with other members of the community about it in terms of the shape it is in. And they're wondering why we're going ahead with the full reconstruction of something that to them looks like one of the better streets in town, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we could get away with putting that off for a few, obviously we put off for a few years, but I mean, you referred to one of the two that were under there that would have to be replaced the water yeah. main and the water main and the sanitary sewer. There's no way we could ascertain like the age of those and kind of look into maybe stretching this out. Yeah. So if it was instead of three years, we could get get it to six or seven years. Yeah. So I think the sanitary sewer is 71 that vintage and it's uh as best as cement pipe as well, which is not something that we use anymore. Um Thank you. Kathy yeah. lives on that. Yeah, we've yeah. already, yeah, I was showing where I lived. And we're talking about the drainage, because the drainage is a huge issue of there. Summer, winter especially, you know, it pools along there. Uh, yeah. And you're talking about possibly right near my house, you would have to resituate. Yeah, there's, we've looked at that. Actually, we've, Peter filled us in that there was issues before, and we've looked at it and why and where. So we're looking at and again, you're saying there's asbestos under there? Asbestos cement, uh, yeah. which is typical in, you know, all municipalities really right. they have it. But it's the no one going forward. Yeah, well, they don't use it anymore, yeah. 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 It's the same with down by the TD Bank and the food land there. We got a drainage problem down there. So yeah. there is problems. Yeah. Um, the part that's going to come into play here is when we're trying to get some of the money from the counties. 
the whole idea in the end is that it would be turned over to us. And I think the whole thing has to be complete before you're going to turn it up, like the part was we take it, unless there's some sort of an agreement in there. So that'll be something for another day. Um, but that's why we left it till the end um, so we can deal with it and get like, the rest of it. It's just, it's terrible. And everybody's pretty excited about this. Let, let me clarify that the sanitary sewer is asbestos cement. The water main is cast iron. So oh. the drinking water is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's another day. Uh, I'm turn over to here. Just fine. You just touch base on the street skate and the Oh, I missed that. Okay. It's, it's, it's so, as far as it's speak, speak my heart here, had some, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor, sorry, just a couple of questions about the parking. So, right back to the search, Quebec Street over here, it has listed as parking on the east side. So, that means all the parking that's currently on the west side would be eliminated. Uh, and we have the pharmacy. If Ways park along that side of the street. Yeah, I, I, again, it's it's so preliminary. Like, okay, it's, these are just concepts. Yep. At least these are things that can still be discussed. Okay, so perfect. And then that was just taking it to the George Street. So I mean, we've got parking on both sides here too. I believe around the cenotaph. It's not. It, or, yeah, or I guess the Pente old Pentecostal church. Mm -hmm. So would that be? The plan going ahead would be to keep the same, so it'd be a double sidewalk to that point, and then afterwards, I think it goes to a single sidewalk from there. Yes, uh, trying to remember offhand. Yeah, there's the last section of the uh, board. Doubles are victorious. Good thing, is that right? That's your own line. Yeah. Exactly. There we go. Um, so we have double parking up to Victoria Street, I think it was right now. Yep. There it is. Yeah, Oak Street, to, well, right up to Victoria on the north side and uh, on the south side, it runs right down. Yeah. One. Yeah. Well, it just has a shoulder once you get past the center. Yeah. That dirt part shoulder. So good. Yeah. But that, that's the plan to continue just what was there or and then go with a single, would it be single sidewalk, Peter? Uh, it'll be double sidewalk. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, single, single parking, I, I'm sorry. Up to yeah, the single park uh, picks up between William and Mary Street, uh, okay. picks up halfway here. Okay. Um, and that's, again, it's preliminary, okay. uh, but the road allowance is quite tight in that area. So, um, so probably at the, the bottom of the hill, I believe there, there might not be any. Okay, thank you. Yep. So, streetscaping, um, as you can see, in, 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 we want to use like uh, certain retaining walls as well, retaining walls that need to be replaced, and we're just trying to look for the, the perfect. Um, Something that's more that fits the that fits the, the roadway and the street itself. Um, we've used lots of different types at like certain bump outs you can see in the, in the, in the sidewalk. And we've implemented the interlocking brick, um, impressed concrete, different different options just to kind of give it a contrast, so it doesn't look like it's all concrete. Sometimes you know we use different colors of brick to uh, match the buildings. You know, so. Um, that part is that paid by the township so like any any with when we did the bridge up by the medical center there we decided that we wanted the fancy uh um precast or whatever on that bridge so people would i think we paid the extra did we not for yeah the impressed concrete on on the bridge uh that the, the township did pay for that to impress concrete yeah we haven't gotten down to that level of detail no. in terms of uh, funding but uh, anything related to a sidewalk my opinion would be sidewalks are the township's responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, but the retaining walls, I, I would I would think that should be a joint uh, funding opportunity. So, uh, that remains to be debated. So, yeah. Okay. So there is quite a retaining wall, and that's what I had, the lady is was she had some damage from the storm last year, right. so that's what the one that I had said 
to Peter to uh, she was going to get it done last year, but it, I don't know. It's hard to tell by these things if there's any elevation changes, but there could be in some spots now that you've done the drainage thing um, and where that is right now, she's just got uh, cement blocks blocking the, the retaining wall that she wanted armor, armor stone put in. And I said to Peter, you better tell her to hold off. She's paying a lot of money to do that thing and nothing worse than doing it and then going back and changing it if the elevations change. So um, that being said, she didn't want, she wants armor stone. And I don't know, it depends where the property line is. That's up to her. She would be paying for that, I would think. But uh, um, by any of the other ones you've done around here, like over on 30 and stuff, there was some pretty nice retaining walls done. Um, but I don't think that suits her for her property. So that'll be a discussion. I'm sure you'll hear about it tonight. So normally as a rule, your property line does not go right to the sidewalk. I mean, there's a right of way there. Are there any of these places along here that they have property right to the sidewalk that they don't have that right of way? Uh, correct, uh, through, through the chair. Uh, there is one section uh, where we may need to acquire property. So you get an easement. An easement or, or a purchase. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Or alternatively, yeah. put, put in a substandard width of a sidewalk. Uh, the uh, accessibility uh, design requirements call for a 1.5 meter wide sidewalk. Uh, as an interim measure, perhaps we could go with a 1.4 meter sidewalk if if we can't obtain property, but that, that's the type of detail we have to uh, resolve yet. But to your knowledge, most of these, there already is an easement there or a right of way of some sort? Uh, most of the properties were able to squeeze in uh, everything you, you've seen so far, okay. other, other than one short section uh, west of the cenotaph, actually, it's just on the north side. How does it work? And I'm sure you've seen this before. One of the questions that was put to me is, because of how old some of them homes are along there, and when you get that big vibrator going down there packing, um, some of them houses could collapse. <laughs> and I'm sure it's happened in the past. Um, how does that work? Like, like how do you like do you mark some of the homes and be careful here, or just do you know? I because it's I looking at some of the places along there, I could see where the you know, old stone foundation and things like that could be a. And they're so close, like you say, like there's some that don't even have room to, how, how do we deal with that in the future, like for liability? We typically now in the last several years now, we've implemented in the contract that uh, we do a preliminary survey of the houses. We have an independent, um, generally there's an independent um, consultant that comes in and surveys every house with the exception of some people who just simply will not let them on the property, which happens. Yeah. But that's typically how we handle that. Yeah. And if there's any issues then we go back and look at the survey and see if construction had an impact. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good to know. Any other questions? No. Sorry. Uh, so the village master drainage study. Um, so this this image really generally depicts uh, how the water the surface water flows. Uh, so from from the north uh, section of the village, uh, I understand it's called the Matheson property. The water flows from north to south, and then uh, following the uh, the lay of the land, um, there's a low point in between George Street and Highway Seven. So the natural uh, grade of the land would be conducive to uh, allowing water to continue to flow there. There is an existing storm sewer in the rear yards. However, it is many decades of, of uh, years old and uh, the condition is suspect as well. So the village has primarily two drainage outlets. Uh, the drainage outlet at the bottom end of Quebec Street crossing under Highway 7, and then underneath several railway, railway sidings, and these, uh, it's a concrete pipe that uh, the, the township acquired in the 1970s, uh, courtesy of the, uh, the railway company. Mm -hmm. So we have camered that sewer, and uh, structurally there's some capacity remaining, but at some point 
that system may need to be replaced. Is that the most ideal place for a sewer? That's uh, That remains to be proven. Um, the other outlet is uh, crossing under Highway 7, just uh, west of William Street. Uh, so there's a, a storm sewer that uh, traverses through the rear yards of a number of houses and crosses through a, a box culvert under the highway and then under the railway tracks. And there's a, there's a minor outlet at this location as well with a, a CSP culvert crossing under the railway tracks. So we need to analyze this in great detail and come up with a, an implement, implementation plan it may involve pumping stations. It may in, involve directional drilling of sewers underneath garages, underneath uh, footings and foundations, but there's a lot of work to be done yet. Well, one of the properties we were looking at, we had what was suggested for a pumping station was the two properties that we own on Highway 7. Um, I think they're across from the rail station somewhere over there. We have some lots of we own and we had we bought them because of the easement that was needed for the for the um, water coming from the north and we've never got rid of them but then one suggestion was that maybe a pumping station could go in there to uh, to help us get rid of the water unfortunately Havelock's built on a swamp and and the water is just crazy some of the flows that we see there the one on Quebec Street we had a problem there a couple of years ago and they went in and fixed it, and I, I seen the water running in there. And it's the same, the ones in the backyard. So, um, place down here where Smitty used to live, it's a, uh, I looked at, they have like a wet wishing well type of thing there. And they have like a guy with a fishing rod there and, and it's running through there. It's crazy. It's crazy. There's a lot of water running. It's unfortunate because most people would only have one, one outlet to worry about. But we have two, it looks like. Yeah, Peter's given us some really good information about uh, the water water flows, the surface water flows, and the groundwater flows as well. The, the hydraulic grade line in the village is underground. It's quite high, uh, so there's a lot of uh, infiltration happening in your sanitary sewer system. So reconstructing George Street will will certainly uh, reduce the amount of infiltration of the groundwater into into that eventually ends up in in your your treatment facility. So. So the long-term benefit of, uh, of reconstructing George Street is uh, reduced infiltration and more capacity for more development with your sanitary sewer system. So there's lots of lots of pros and cons, but, uh, but it, it all needs to be renewed. Uh, so with respect to the rear yard storm center in the back there, so um, Quebec Street, is the up, upstream end. Um, there is, I'm not sure who did it, but someone installed a an overflow pipe at this Quebec Street intersection. So some water gets diverted underneath the railway tracks, some water gets diverted into the rear yard storm sewer. So it's, a, it's, an, it's you're, you're very fortunate to have that overflow capacity right now. If a, a problem happened with that, that sewer underneath the railway sidings, at least you'll be able to get rid of some water. But uh, long term, ideally, we would be able to work with the property owners to be able to ac access the rear yards to reconstruct the storm sewer. Um, alternatively, find a new location for the storm sewer. The, we've been working on this this design exercise since 2017, and one of the suggestions, one of the design concepts was to extend a storm sewer down Highway 7. That would be a logistical nightmare with the amount of traffic traveling Highway 7. There aren't too many other alternative routes. So there's a lot of work to be done yet on analyzing the best solution for- That would please the MPO, country. then they would have an opportunity to close Highway 7. And <laughs> That's what they talked to us about a couple of years ago. <laughs> Bypass half block. Uh, so uh, hopefully we've got some uh, residents who are able to work with uh, with us in developing a, a long term solution for this this storm sewer system. <laughs>
And uh, next steps uh, in the project, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so County Road 48, uh, reconstruction. Uh, tonight we hope to get a lot of feedback, a lot of public comment, uh, good ideas. <laughs> uh, so finalize the design of phase one and advance to construction in 2024. And uh, so we did highlight uh, there is a location where we may need to encroach uh, with the sidewalk on George Street. So, and then we want to develop an implementation plan for phases two and three. The funding is going to be a critical component of that implementation plan. Uh, at this time, from the county's perspective, phases two and three are, are not in our 10 year construction program, but that is a living, breathing, dynamic document. So, if things uh, advance, need to advance uh, quickly, we're prepared to work with the municipality. And, and developing a, a finance plan. We're very fortunate that uh, you have sufficient uh, funding now to do the sanitary sewer and water system and sidewalks for phase one. So we're, we're, we're very anxious to move ahead with phase one as well as you are. Um, and then uh, the uh, Highway 7 Mary Street intersection improvement, uh, uh, there will be ongoing dialogue with the, with the MTO between the township and the county. We're, we're partners on that intersection. There's three levels of government uh, intersecting there, so we're bound to work together. Uh, the master drainage study, uh, so tonight, hopefully get some public comment. Uh, we need to assess the wetland. That is the drainage outlet for the, uh, the surface water drainage systems. Uh, come up with some design concepts, uh, consider rebuilding the rear yard storm, storm sewer, and uh, possibly develop some easements, uh, or look for an alternative vote, alternative alignment for that storm sewer system. And then uh, financing the implementation plan, and then report back to council. That's, that's our presentation today. Um, we uh, have a long road drawing here. Um, Council would like to gather around and hold any any uh, difficult questions. We're happy to receive them today. Okay. Um, yeah. So the one thing by getting this done and once this is all passed, the good thing about having the whole thing done is when we are looking for funding and we have actual drawings and things like that, it's going to help us. Because uh, I would hope that at least like Deputy Mayor Webb said with uh, phase two. Uh, I'm hoping that we don't have to wait, that we can, we can lobby county council to uh, come with us on that too. And I'm, you know, I think when they seen the shape it's in, like it, for, for a town, like it's it's pretty well a cow path out there. So um, we do need to, to upgrade it. There's nobody to have that in, in an urban setting. So um, like you say, phase three, maybe we, we might be able to hold off a little longer on the funding side of things, but, uh, um, we need to get a, a plan in place so we can get the thing done. And uh, it's going to be beautiful when it's done, but it, it, I'm sure it's a complicated one compared to some because of you know the the way the drainage is and how much water is in there. But uh, we'll see how it goes. But for tonight, then, like I said earlier, council, like you know, we'll be over there, and uh, I'm sure the public will be coming in. But the format will be that you know you can. Hang around for a little bit, or you can hang around for the whole thing. But it's the um, the main thing will be similar to this. You're gonna open it up and explain it, are you? Like, and then to stand at the table. Is that uh, through the chair? Uh, we've advertised it as uh, basically a, a public walkthrough. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be a number of staff available for questions and comments. Uh, there is there isn't a formal presentation. Okay. Good. All right. Okay, so if council wants to take a look, I know some has already, but uh, <laughs> um, we might want to go through it. And if you have any questions, if something jumps out at you, here's where the thousand words. So, I have a question for you with the rear uh, lot sewer system. So, do you have an easy way of explaining that to the public as to how you would accomplish that? That's that's the sixty four thousand dollar question. <laughs> um, we're we're again we're at the fact finding stage. Yeah. So one solution is to reconstruct the entire system. Another solution would be to, to reconstruct part of it and, and develop a pumping station. 
uh, keep a, another half, another part of it as gravity, uh, or find an alternative alignment, uh, or start looking at developing underground storage or stormwater management ponds, oversized sections of sewer and use that for underground storage. So then that's a question for you too. So from uh, Quebec Street down to say even the, the first phase. So are you going to put everything underground? Are you going to bury everything hydro? Everything's going underground? Are you going to leave hydro poles there? What are you going to do? Um, yeah. For the most part, everything's going underground, but as far as uh, hydro and that stuff that we have to still plan as far as, um, because sometimes the cost gets prohibitive as far as when you get hydro involved in, with uh, putting their plant underground. Uh -huh. So that's just, there's certain there's certain things that we're still looking at actually, and we're getting prices and, and uh, some, we're just going over ideas as far as that goes. But for the most part, the poles will be visible. It'll be above ground, most of it, okay. I would assume. Because like I know from the past, like normally as a rule, you do try your first choices to bury everything if you can. Yeah. For aesthetic purposes. In a lot of cases, and you know, the space matters too, you know, yep. especially for that downtown section of George. Yep. Um, it's very tight. Well, yeah, that's why I was wondering if you could- Still looking at that. Because if you could go underground, you get rid of the pools, that frees up some space for your, your sidewalks and your parking. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. you can ask. Yeah. So anyways, okay, well, I'm sure you're going to get lots of questions tonight. And, and uh, you know, hopefully we can answer a lot of things. I guess a lot of it will just be documenting some of the questions, but some of them we won't be able to answer. But uh, um, I know staff's been working, I think, on a parking plan or a um, somehow to access the stores um, along the main part of George where all the businesses are. Years ago, we talked about, like when we used to have this trip, it was township revitalization. One of the things that came up using this parking lot behind them anyways is an access. And, and I think that's coming back into play a little bit, that if there was ever a possibility of getting from Ontario Street to Oak Street here through that back end there, um, that might be a, an alternative and you know, there is a couple of uh, blockages that we might not be able to make that work but we own the property on the other end and uh, I know they were talking to the Legion and, and some of the people along there so hopefully we can come up with it's going to be like that's a long time for a business to, to be out of business because not everybody will walk down there so hopefully we can come up with a plan to, to help things I mean, we're not the first to do this. I mean, everybody has to go through this and um, hopefully the end product makes it worthwhile. So, so if council wants to take a look at what's there and, uh, uh, and if you got any questions, you can do it here instead of tonight or this afternoon. But uh, anybody want to take a look at it? Or has everybody looked at it already? Have you looked at it already? Right. Well, I'm going to wait. Yeah. Yeah, for me. Well, I'm gonna take. I didn't look at it, but I'm gonna take a look at it anyway. But this will be on display tonight at the meeting as well. Okay. Uh, a series of panels. That's well, the, the the presentation you saw today. There'll be a series of panels on display. Like the bear, the 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 flats. Over on the I'll I'll provide Tom. So that was talk about something right in that section there. So we own that lot. So one of their staff, I think, we're looking at it, going through here and then going through the back of the region and then coming back into this parking lot here. And that would keep everything flowing from here to here. But then again, that pipe is in there somewhere. Right? Yeah, the storm goes through here. Mm -hmm. that's we own that. End. And that's where the overflow is. So yeah, that, that's, that's, yeah, exactly. That's that overflow that comes in. Those double catch facings are that's the storm. Yeah. Okay. Right there. there to there to there to there through here. This is a tough section as far as mm -hmm. the existing. Buildings, but there's nothing major. Yeah. 
here in Mahalo. Yeah, so that building's not there. Be be the way to the yeah. That's our so there's yeah. an opportunity there. I guess second or third time they've been down to Mahalo building that. I know I like yeah, brother I don't think there is, but uh, yeah, and then the other one was here to where I said, I wish you were here, right here. Yeah, totally jumping. <laughs> okay. So, if there's any any further questions, we're happy to respond. Uh, anybody got any questions? All right, then. Well, thanks, guys. Thank, for you, Peter. thank you very thanks. much. Thank you. Yeah. And we look forward to tonight. This is like I say, it's been long. It's they've been waiting for a long time. So hopefully we can get this thing moving. And some we had hoped that it would have started this year, but um with everything that's been going on, everything's delayed. So um most have heard that over and over and I'll hear it one more time. Okay. So all right then. So if there's no other questions, uh look for a confirming bylaw for for this meeting. Um yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.